Hello chess lovers, Soren here and in this video I want to share with you an interesting game played between Hungarian chess grandmaster Lajos Portis and the 8th world chess champion Mikhail Tal. As you know Mikhail Tal played French defense only a few times in his career, one of them was against Bobby Fischer which ended in a draw, but what is interesting it was this game which put an end to Tal's French career. In the end of the video you will learn the reason. But meanwhile, this game was played in 1961 in Oberhausen, which is a city in Germany. And now without further ado, let's get started with our game and see what happened on the board. Portish opened up with d4 and Tal responded with this flexible e6 move. This is a move which Mikhail Botvinnik loved to play and is sometimes called Botvinnik's move. And in here, instead of proceeding with by going for Queen's Gambit type positions, Portish played e4, inviting Tal to form the French defense. Tal played d5, and we have knight d2. This is the Tarash variation. Knight f6, e5. Knight d7, f4. Black allowed white to gain space, but now will put pressure on this vulnerable d4 square, which is a standard idea in French defense. c3, knight c6, knight f3, and queen b6. Honestly, I don't like this move and I myself have suffered a lot of losses with this queen b6 move. Instead of queen b6, in here there is an interesting line, for example, playing rook b8 and then b5 and then queen b6. This is even a better alternative, you are grabbing space on the queen side and is creating better attacking chances, but in our game we have queen b6 g3 by Portish, c takes d4, c takes d4, and f6. This time Tal is challenging white's pawn center from the king side, but instead of playing f6, I have to tell you that the main move is bishop before check, and after king f2, in here there is a very interesting g5 move, which is emphasizing the vulnerability of this d4 and e5 pawns. This is another standard move which can be seen very often in French defense. Let's go back, but in our game we have f6, bishop h3, white is putting pressure on e6, f takes e5, f takes e5, bishop b4 check, king f1, and knight f8, a defensive move which is not in Mikhail Tal's style. Instead it was better simply to castle king's side. And the thing is that you can't even capture on e6 because black can simply play bishop h8 and black has a compensation, no problem at all. Right now the threat is knight takes e5, for example if king g2 then black has this knight takes e5 move and if bishop takes c8 then knight takes f3 is coming followed by rook takes c8. Black is enjoying a very pleasant position, or after king h8, if move like bishop takes d5, then this is even worse, you can step into this queen b5 fork. Let's go back, but in our game we have this passive looking knight f8 move, knight e2, knight g6, and later white will emphasize the fact that the knight on g6 is misplaced, king g2, black castles king side, bishop g4, there it goes, white is opening up the h pawn's path. Bishop d7, h4 is on the board. Bishop a5, already the threat was h5 and you can't even play knight d7 because of this a3, b4 threat. That's why Tal played bishop a5, but now comes rook b1. White is both overprotecting the pawn on b2, is freeing this dark squared bishop and also at any moment b4 can be a nice idea. Queen b5, h5, knight d7, this time we have h6, g6. White managed to weaken black's dark squares and later will exploit them successfully. Bishop g5, knight f5, bishop takes f5, rook takes f5, g4, and rook takes f3. Tal is going for a tricky exchange sacrifice in order to make things complex, but this gives black nothing. Rook f7 is better, but even in this case, white has an advantage. White can play b4, and if bishop b6, then bishop f6. Knight g5 can be a threat, knight f4 or a4. All these are moves which can blow apart black's position. But in our game after g4, we have rook takes f3. King takes f3, bishop b6. King g3, rook f8. Queen d2, bishop c7. This time Tal wants to go for knight takes e5. That's why Portish played bishop f4, a very solid move. Bishop e8, we have a typical cramped French position and this is an opening which is absolutely not in Mikhail Tal's style. 
Rook f1, bishop b6. Meanwhile, Tal is making random moves and it looks like that his lack of strategic ideas. Knight b4, rook f1. Knight d3, rook f3. Queen takes b2. Another tricky move, but even if not queen takes b2, for example, if knight before, then this time bishop g5 can be very unpleasant. After the exchange of rooks, white will also play queen f4, and this is going to be a decisive attack. Let's go back in our game after rook f3, we have queen takes b2, and queen takes d3. Bishop b5, bishop g5, a powerful response, you can't win this queen because of this rook f8 checkmate. Tal played rook f5, but here Portish simply offered the exchange of queens and at the same time threatened queen c8 check. Now if you go for the exchange of queens, then the endgame is hopeless for black, white can easily win. That's why Tal played bishop takes d4, but this is also losing after queen c8 check, king f7, queen c7, Tal resigned. Black king is simply in a mating net and... That's why after queen c7 we have a resignation. As, as I have already mentioned in the beginning of the video, this game put an end to Mikhail Tal's French career and here is what he wrote. At that point my French career came to an end. The French requires black to play with great accuracy and this is a quality I never had a great measure of. But what is interesting, though Mikhail Tal writes that at that point his French career came to an end, but in 1990s he went for French defense three times and lost all those three games as well. Yes, he didn't learn a lesson from this game, played French three more times and lost those games as well. And well, in the end, would like to know what's your opinion about French defense? Is French so terrible or... It's playable. In the end, let's also solve a chess puzzle. Please take a look at this position and try to find the winning line for black. I will wait for your answer in the comment section. So this time the comment section is going to be really heated, right? Thanks for watching. Here are more suggestions for you. Feel free to check them out as well. I will see you in my next video. Take care.